Welcome to Life Happens, where Texans come to protect their legacy and prepare for the second half of life. Join your host, attorney Kim Hegwood of Your Legacy Legal Care and our weekly guest as we navigate the challenges that emerge as life happens. Now here's your host, Kim Hegwood. Good morning and welcome to Life Happens with me, Kim Hegwood, and our very special guest today is Zoe DeBrule with Capstone Healthcare. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? And uh, I'm doing great. And so I'm like, every day I wake up, it's a good day. <laughs> yes, I do. So, so today we're going to give you a lot of good information on myth-busting Medicaid. And so, because I, I know from personal experience, a lot of people get some very bad advice. And um, so we're going to let Zoe walk you through some information. And, um, and so I think a lot of people, Zoe, confuse, uh, you know, Medicare and Medicaid, you know, because they it all sounds the same. It all comes from the, you know, from the federal government, so to speak. And, um, and so why don't you go ahead and, and kind of give our listeners a real easy difference between them so they understand. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So uh, the main difference, and I think that what we're going to touch on, you know, especially in, in this segment is going to be, so Medicaid is going to cover that long-term care and Medicare, it will never cover long-term care. It never covers room and board. That's only, uh, you know, your doctor's visits, your hospitalizations, and things like that. Uh, now, a lot of people can have both. They can have Medicare and Medicaid, right? So Medicare is going to cover, like I said, that skilled nursing, hospitalization, doctor's visits, and then that Medicaid is going to come underneath it and then pay the portion, like whatever the co-pays are, right? Whatever is still owed, uh, whatever portion that Medicare doesn't cover, Medicaid will. But it also covers your long-term care, so your nursing facilities and things like that. And so uh, we usually tell clients that Medicare cares if you get well, and um, and Medicaid is what's there if you don't. <laughs> that's, that's, a good, that's a good point. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> And so, but you, you have a, uh, uh, in your job, you're, you're basically meeting families and you're saying, um, hey, one of your loved ones, you know, has to go, you know, to a nursing home. So you're meeting these families and they are having to transition to a nursing home. And so, you know, what do you recommend that they do to prepare uh, for that move if they need to? So that's a good question. It's very difficult because you can't ever really prepare to put your loved one in a nursing home. Uh, but there are some things that you can do, especially uh, years before. And that's something that I, I wish that there was, you know, more information out there. Just go start transferring money, you know, there at the end, because then you can get penalized and things like that. So it is something to look at long term, looking at keeping those accounts uh, under twenty five hundred dollars. I recommend to my families under two thousand dollars just to be on the safe side. Um, but then also, you know, just um, when it comes to estate planning and things like that, keeping everything in uh, your loved one's name, because we do have the Lady Bird those things. Um, but also always, uh, if you are a power of attorney to your parent or your loved one, put your name on their bank account. Um, even though that's not your money, you know, that's their money, but putting your name on their bank account can help you later. And so, um, when, uh, so those are good, good thoughts in, in that regards. And so, um, but you find uh, in your practice a lot like ours, you know, when we see clients that uh, sometimes uh, the income is uh, over the Medicaid limit. And so, and um, how do you advise clients to, uh, you know, what do they need to do in that regards? Um, it depends on how much over that they are, but when it's, I would usually say a thousand or less, uh, consult with an attorney and do a qualified income trust, a QIT, and uh, that usually will get them approved for Medicaid. Um, when it's a lot over, um, there's not way too much that can be done in order, you know, to get for Medicaid for a nursing facility when it's over, you know, a thousand over resourced. Uh, in those cases, I would recommend personal care homes, group homes, things like that, because there's not too much moving that can be done. And uh, so just so you know, so you can put uh, that overage um, in that QIT. Um, anything, over a thousand? Over, anything over the, the income limit, you can put in the QIT. 
Um, okay. Also, uh, as long as the as long as your income doesn't exceed the cost of care, that QIT works. And then there's some really cool things that um, I'll have to get with you to uh, uh, show you different things they can use that QIT for that we just found out too. And so yeah, I would love and, that uh, information. It's wonderful. That yeah, helps so many families. Yeah, because it makes a difference in um, in planning, and it makes a difference in in you know in how they how they take care and how they spend down and things like that. And so, so what do you tell clients when, uh, when they've got life insurance? Um, we need to look at it. Uh, some people think that that automatically throws them out, but it doesn't uh, cause there's two values, right? There's the face value and the cash value. The cash value is what Medicaid's really going to look at. Most of the time, the cash value isn't very, very high. I believe it's 1500 of it can be delegated to burial, end of life expenses and things like that. Um, so as long as it's uh, you have a three thousand, if it, the cash value is 3000, you can delegate 1500 of it to end of life. And then you just have that other 1500 uh, as an asset and that wouldn't throw throw them out. So we just got to look at it, see what we can do. Yeah, that's us too, you know, so everything you, you get statements, you always look at everything to determine, you know, the best, uh, the best stuff. And, you know, for the most part, I tell clients a lot, most things can be fixed uh, and more people qualify than what they think. You know, they think yes. that you have to be poor to qualify for Medicaid, but that couldn't be further from the truth because Medicaid is the number one payer for long-term care in this country right now. And so, in the, and it's very easy for the middle class to use. Um, to protect that spouse at home that's not going into a nursing home um, because that's really important as well. And, um, and so definitely for, you know, for those of us that, you know, that help guys like you, you know, with Medicaid crisis planning and things like that, um, you know, they've got options and they just have to see a good elder law attorney to do that. And so, so, um, so what do you tell clients about Medicaid paying, uh, you know, previous medical bills? Uh, so they'll, Medicaid usually goes back uh, three months. Um, so depending on when we can get that application started and submitted, uh, we will be able to get the last 90 days covered. Uh, so if they've been in the hospital or they have uh, maybe an LTEC or something like that before they come to us, if we can go ahead and get the application started, um, even though it may take you know 30 days or however long, 90 days prior to when it was submitted, we can usually get that covered. So one of the things, the biggest myth that we find that um, clients get so much bad information on is the house. Um, if I go in the nursing home and get on Medicaid, they're going to take my home. <laughs> and so what do you tell clients in regards to the house? Don't sell it. Just leave it. Like it is. <laughs> leave it everything like it is. Um, I've helped lots of families who actually spouses after, you know, their loved one back and selling the home afterwards. Um, but just leave it like it is, you know, especially if uh, you're just putting one of your loved ones in the facility and then someone else is living there as long as it's occupied um, and not, you're not receiving any income, you know, from that home. It's not an issue at all. There is the Lady Bird deed. So, uh, as long as I believe it's this year, as long as it's worth less than six hundred and eighty-eight thousand, then you have no issues. Yeah, good stuff. And so, so Zoe, tell me a little bit about Capstone Healthcare. What do y'all do? So, Capstone Healthcare, we are long-term care, skilled nursing, uh, and our Veterans Memorial location. We do have a secured memory care unit, um, but the majority of our beds are long-term. Uh, we do have Medicaid beds as well as Medicaid pending beds. So, if you don't have Medicaid yet and all of that, uh, we have Medicaid specialists on our team. Um, our business office managers help with that as well. Um, so we, we really like to help uh, navigate, you know, with families and, and get them that coverage. Um, but we also do short term rehabilitation stays as well. So if you just need a few weeks of PT, OT, uh, speech therapy as well, uh, wound care. And so that sounds awesome. And, um, and so uh, definitely. So uh, Zoe, if somebody wants to get some information from you about your about your facilities, how do they find you? Uh, give me a call, 713-887-9887. Uh, I do have two Houston locations, uh, one off of Orem and 288. And then I do have one uh, on the north side off of 
Fall Broken Veterans Memorial. Like I said, we do have a secured unit. Uh, that one's co-ed, male and female, at the veterans location. Uh, but give me a call, shoot me an email, or you can go to any of our facilities' websites and fill out an information sheet, and somebody will give you a call. Uh, we also are available for tours at any time, so just stop on in any time of the day, weekend, whatever is convenient, and we'll be happy to show you around and answer some questions for you. And so for Zoe, the, for those of us that are that our listeners that are listening and not watching, can you give them the phone number and the um, email address? Yes. So the email is Z D E B R U H L at capstonehc.com. Uh, and then again, 713-887-9886. Um, and then our, our web address is uh, capstonehealthcarevm.com. C-A-P-S-T-O-N-E-H-E-A-T-H-C-A-R-E-V-M.com. Perfect. And so thank you so much for being on the show today. And it's good to get some uh, more good information out for our clients. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Life Happens with Kim Hegwood. Be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. wherever you listen to your podcasts as we navigate through the challenges that emerge as life happens. The content of this podcast does not establish an attorney-client relationship or constitute attorney-client privilege, legal, medical, financial, or any other professional advice.